from Washington, D.C., this is the Beyond the Dumbbells Show. Your source of information and inspiration for living an audacious life. Audacious life. Hear interviews and social banter with special guests on Fitspiration and news from around the globe. Here are your hosts, fitness and lifestyle experts, Brian and Jenny Sweeney. All right. Yo, yo, yo. All right. So we always, we always kind of start the shows the same, which is I'm trying to not be overly excited and just start cutting into it. So a little bit of... I guess um, audio foreplay, just to kind of ease into the topic. Um, but what I want to do is like, I can't believe how much stuff we're going to talk about today. And it's all just so amazing. You're going to be overwhelmed. It's a ton. So <laughs> we're going to review lifestyle. And when we go through choosing topics, typically it's obviously we're drawing from our own experiences, our own personalities, our own behaviors. But then we've got an entire um, background in clients oh, and yeah. relatives and friends and everyone that struggles. And they bring these things two conversations frequently and we talked about lifestyle when we first started the podcast and lifestyle being everything that encompasses living a healthy life yep. lifestyle that word is over overused oh yeah i totally agree so everyone there's a lot of lifestyle experts <laughs> right we're calling ourselves ones too um <laughs> it's our lifestyle experts i'm an expert at my lifestyle so that's oh, what like that, that means um but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna kind of review and it, from a place of love, um, observations that where we see people keep shooting themselves in the foot mm -hmm. and it's a blindness that people live. They go through life with this disguise on about what they're really doing, where they're really going. And the disguise kind of just reflects back into their own face. They're bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. You tried not Great. to say Great. We just went explicit. Help. We just exactly. went explicit with that one word. Um, <laughs> dang it. But I think it's, you know, it's that mask they're wearing because it's, uh, you don't want to reveal their real you, maybe because you're too afraid to admit it to yourself or somebody else. But you also think that there's going to be time to correct or change or modify or do whatever you have to do. Everybody thinks we have boundless time. I mean, I was just 20 yesterday. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, it keeps freaking me out that I'm closer to 50, you know, than, than anything else. It's like, oh my gosh. So all those things that I wanted to get done. You know, I don't want to be a really old man when I get there. So, yeah, we, lifestyle, typically, we think we have an excess amount of time to pursue the things that are important to us. Mm -hmm. We kind of lie to ourselves that they are important, Yep. but not so much that we're going to do them now. Yeah. It's important to me, but I'm going to do it later. Exactly, because I have all the time. Because I've got all the time I want. Oh, yeah. Um, now, what we're seeing, and if you let me know if you agree, um, the mindset now amongst gym owners, um, there's circles that we run where we interface with gym owners and business coaches and everything else. And the idea is it struck a chord um, this last month about we're not in the fitness business anymore. Mm -hmm. And the mindset was um, business oriented, but it got more play in my head that we're, we're not doing fitness because gyms themselves aren't going to get done anymore. And to continue to categorize ourselves as Oh, I'm a fitness center. I'm a, I'm a gym. I'm a barbell place. You know, I'm, you know, I'm all iron. You know, it's yeah. the gym thing doesn't work anymore. I agree with you. And being in the business and coming into eight years of professional owning our own brick and mortar business, as far as a gym, um, what we're starting to see more is that we don't losing weight is easy. Yes. We can help anyone lose weight, <laughs> Yes. but it's because we're not able to help them adapt the behaviors to take it to the next level. Yep which uh, is keep the weight off, mm -hmm. um, not end up in the same place where you just came from, mm -hmm. and then to find other things to pursue. Yes. And it's uh, along that same line. It's how many times we've had the conversation with people where, you know, we're at the, we'll say we're at the end of like a five minute conversation and it's like, wow, you're doing, it's like, oh my gosh, I lost 10 pounds. Oh my gosh, 10 pounds. And I said, yeah, but I've lost that same 10 pounds 50 times. Mm. And it's so, it's so hard because you just... Being in the fitness oh, business, that's a horrible thing to hear. It is. That it's, it's repeat business. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I great. But at the end of the day, if I can't change the way you think, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of reshaping what our, what our gym is now. So yep. we're a lifestyle and cultural rehabilitation center is kind of Ooh. the, kind of the way I'm, I'm leaning, right? Because you can go anywhere. We talked about this in one of the other shows that um, you can go anywhere and work out. Yes. You can sweat on your own. You can sweat on the street. You can go do anything. Yes. Losing weight is the the num num reason people walk into a gym. 
correct. Hey, how you doing? What are you, why are you here? I want to lose weight. Mm-hmm. Of course you do. Right. No, nobody comes to the gym for their lifestyle to be altered. <laughs> right. You know, they, they want to come in and get the superficial, my pants fit too tight. Can you make my pants not fit tight? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Do you oh. want to keep them from getting tight? Yep. Or um, the number one I get is I'm getting married soon. Oh. And then you're going to shock the hell out of him when you put it all back on. <laughs> it's, it's just for the pictures. Um, just so y'all know, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, okay, so when we talk about being a rehabilitation center, um, and obviously there's a fine line there. I'm not talking reaching outside of a scope of practice. Of course. But the reinforcement, and it starts with your community. Mm-hmm. Um, it's creating a an environment where people can think healthy thoughts mm-hmm. and not be ridiculed by family and friends mm-hmm. and neighbors and coworkers and everyone else that doesn't like seeing other people do healthy things. Oh yeah. So if we're going to kind of define this, what we're thinking is we, it's what it means to be successful in shaping a future for yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you come into the gym and you're like, Hey, I want to, I want to lose 10 pounds. Can you help me? How about we do better than that? What if in five years from now, you know, you aren't on any prescription drugs anymore. Right. What if you never go to a heart doctor ever? Yep. Um, these types of things people don't come in to talk about because they don't see that the weight is the gateway drug to all the diseases down the road. No, I, I agree. It's, it's very sad, but it's very true. And I think it's just kind of the world that we live in. It's just kind of um, do what feels good and one day you'll get there and, mm. you know, s- celebrate life and don't be so, you know. You, <laughs> celebrate you, with food. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so. And you, you and I, we always we, we talk uh, offline first, and just kind of make sure the topics are worth discussing. Because mm-hmm. again, if this thing doesn't have value, oh, yeah. just Brian and Jen talking is boring. Oh yeah, and uh, we too, we have to make sure that we don't have such different opinions that <laughs> it's going to be like a show that could take ten years to try to explain. I'm actually kind of looking forward. I'm looking forward to that show <laughs> because I keep looking for something that's going to get edgy with you, and we're more in alignment than I would think. So, with what we're going to discuss as far as um, lifestyle. I'm going to call them failures or behaviors mm-hmm. or things where we just keep watching people walk into doors. Um, I think you and I are a decent example of the human race because mm-hmm. we're human. Yep. All right. And I think that <laughs> I can make a generalized statement to say all humans want to live a long and healthy life. Yes. Okay. Assuming that, you know, there isn't something else wonky going on, mm-hmm. but the idea is I should be able to take this recipe um, to reshape somebody. Mm-hmm. And the return benefit is, how would you like to live an active, healthy lifestyle until oh, yeah. you're 85? Yeah, I mean, 90. I can say that we have never had somebody walk in the door and say, you know, I just kind of want to see where this goes, but I'm really hoping I'm dead in a week. That's right. Like, you know? If, you know, if this, life, if this gets too hard, you know, I'm, I'm expecting to keel over at any time. Exactly. So I th- mean, I'm going to keep the weight. Right. I mean, you hear just, I want to be around for my children's children's children, but I want to feel good about it. You know, I don't want to be wheelchair bound. Sure. You, you picture these things that are long term that I think most of us are hoping that we're going to live 80s and 90s, hundreds, if you're feeling amazing. Sure. So we came up with kind of some observations. We came up with a little bit of a hit list mm-hmm. on um, behaviors that are common enough that we're going to talk about them, but also that they're common enough that they can be corrected. Yes. So you had a couple that I liked. So I, let's start with kind of what you were thinking. So what's one of your... PV, noticeably, noticeably. Exactly. That's not a word. So I'm going to start with one that's probably going to get me in trouble. This, okay. is, this is my edgy one. It's the celebration of weight loss or fat loss with food. Mm. So this is, a, this is a lifestyle hang up. This is a lifestyle hang up and we see it over and over again. And it's like, hold on. How long is this plan that you have me on or nutrition strategy that right. you have me on? Because... I want to make sure that I'm done before this event because I've been looking forward to this event all year. And what it is, is a pizza fast followed by a taco night. So it's, you know, when can I be done living this little rigid lifestyle you have me on, but I want you to know it's not long-term for me. I'm going to stick up with this thing for six weeks, but I have to end in, you know, six weeks and maybe half a day because I have to have my 32 ounce ribeye. So, that I've been planning for. So this is the, so when you're saying celebrate, celebrate with food, it can mm-hmm. be any event where you might, um, you had mentioned uh, offline yeah. a holiday. Yep. Um, but it can also be, um, it's been a tough week. Exactly. And I'm going to go out and get crazy. Exactly. Um, 
this is the old mindset of cheat day mm-hmm. and cheat meal. Mm-hmm. And because you, the only way you can get somebody to be, be to behave the way you need them to is to reward them. Because we're all just kids with checkbooks, right? You've got to yes. give what's in it for me. Yep. You know, so what that you're going to feel pretty amazing, that mm-hmm. you're going to start sleeping normal, you know, that you're going to be able to have energy for your kids and for your job. But that's not good enough. You know, you're going to work hard Monday through Friday so that Saturday night you can just defile yourself. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But this is the most common thing that I hear is as soon as I am done, you know, I'm on this specific plan right now, but I can't wait to be done because I have missed uh, cheesy fries. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. You're, you are already planning. So you're not going to eat, you're not going to eat cheesy fries for, let's say, four weeks. But on the start of week five, you're already planning to introduce yeah. the food that you've managed to cut out. That's a hard one for me. So what I typically will say is, awesome, why don't you buy yourself something, new pair of shoes, new pair of socks, you mm-hmm. know, whatever your budget allows, but don't celebrate the food, if that makes sense. I agree. Yeah. And it's, I think it's human nature to more, I personally think, especially living where we live and we're spoiled rotten with everything that we've got around us, I think the celebration of food is a very normal thing for us as humans. Uh, it's... It- it's that one thing that we can't really account for because um, when people want to break the relationships with food, yep. uh, food is there when we party. It's yes. there when we mourn. Yep. It's it's um, it helps us when we're in love. It helps us when we're ticked off. Oh, yeah. It's always there. Yes. And the cold and calculated way to look at food is it's just something that makes me exist. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot to kind of get to that spot where you're like, the food in my cupboard is there so that I can survive. But then because I enjoy it, I have some things that make me enjoy it while I'm eating. Mm-hmm. But it can be abused like a drug. Of course. Okay. So how, yeah. would you, how would you fix that? So I would say if it happens to be you, plan for something different in the end. So let's say you are on a, a new plan. You know, you're trying to, I, I don't know. Let's, let's say you're trying to decrease your body fat. Mm-hmm. In the end of it, if you've done it, do something like go, go buy yourself a physical object or, you know, for women, if it's like, if, if you want a new pair of earrings, go buy them. Or for guys, it's like, man, I really wanted those, you know, new nanos that came out and, and they're in your budget. Have that be your reward. Don't you're, reward yourself with a cake. Okay. So you're talking about reprogramming the reward system of that person. Exactly. Okay. So oh, thank you. anytime, um, this is where a spouse yep. wouldn't bring home a cake for someone that did a, had a good day at work or got a promotion. Exactly. So it's, it's um, one, you got to kind of identify it. I'm yep. that person that rewards myself with food. Yes. Okay. That's a good one. Yeah. I like it. Cool. Um, what about you? Okay. So <clears throat> I've got, what I see more frequently is people that do the start and stop as far as I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to exercise. Mm -hmm. And you kind of touched on it and you're probably, you're going to see it's a common theme in here. People look at things in short terms and then we're going to beat that to death that it's because of a limited vision. Mm -hmm. It's a lack of the ability to see yourself in the future. Um, that's kind of what makes us, um, what's the word? Um, just aware, Mm -hmm. you know, that allows us to be ascension beings that I'm aware that I'm, my life is not limited to the physical I exist beyond now. So my life also, my physical life mm-hmm. exists beyond the next couple of weeks right. or to my next vacation. It's almost like, yeah, I'm paying attention to when I go out on spring break, but next October, I'm not thinking about what I'm going to look like, feel yeah. like, or do anything. Of course not. So mine is when people start and stop mm-hmm. over and over and over. You talked about it, somebody coming in and losing the same 10 pounds over and over again. Um, that... It kicks off with an unrealistic goal in a very short time frame. Mm-hmm. So it's a whole lot of sacrifice, a whole lot of pain. And then once they get there, they're like, I'm done. Thank goodness. You know, I, I don't have right. to do this anymore. And what they don't see in that moment is you just did the hardest part of accomplishing the goal. That yes. from here on, maintenance is a different story. Mm-hmm. Maintenance is easy. It's achieving. It's climbing up the hill. But once you're at the top of the hill, instead of continuing forward, you push the rock back down behind you. So oh, that's a good analogy. So I it's like, like what the hell did you just do, dude? Right. Um, and why do it? Well, like that, you know, is it that important to look good for spring break, but you don't care that in June you're chasing your kids around the yard, huffing and puffing, and you can't breathe because you put on 20 pounds. It's crazy. Anyone that wants a six pack can get it. 
Okay, 40, 50, 60 years old. If you're sitting there like, I want a lifestyle where I can I can rock a tank top. I can mow the yard without a shirt on. Yeah. I can, you know, ladies can put on a bikini and be like, doesn't matter my age because, you know, I have enough vision of my self right. that I won't, I'm going to put in the work to get there. Mm-hmm. So h- how to kind of overcome the start and stop thing? One, it stops because there's a period of reward. And I think it plays into what you were saying. You're like, I'm stopping. Now it's reward time. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to, and then, all it takes is 72 hours of bad eating to not sleep well, then start making bad decisions again, yep. feeling like crap. And then you're on the cycle. The cycle is rebooted for you and you're at the bottom of the hill with that heavy stone. Yep. So I, I really like that analogy. Mm. I've actually never heard you say that. I just pulled it out of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good on the fly. The, the I'm heavy good on rock. The fly. That's right. I pulled a heavy rock out of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what, what else you got? <laughs> that tickled me. <laughs> um, so since we kind of mentioned holiday a little bit with my um, talking about celebration, the other one that I get all the time, and I don't know if you've heard this one, have you ever heard anybody come in and they are planning for an overindulgence? So typically we see this, or I see it, I should say, most often around Thanksgiving mm-hmm. where people are leading up to that big eating day. Wearing the stretchy pants. They're wearing the stretchy pants. Yep. And they say... Well, you know, I mean, my plan over the next three days is I'm hardly going to eat anything because when I sit down for Thanksgiving, I am going to eat three full plates. I'm going to put my stretchy pants on and then whatever dessert is in that house, I'm having a piece of everything and I don't care how I feel afterwards. But since I'm not going to really eat the three days leading into it, I figure I won't get any weight. Okay. So in in that regard, what we're talking about is I want to, I want to eat like I'm at the trough (laughs) <laughs> but I don't want the guilt of the scale giving me feedback I don't want to hear. Yes. So I'm going to go again, pushing the stone up the hill. Yep. I'm going to lose 10 pounds before the event comes on. Mm-hmm. And then knowing that it's going to be a party time, maybe it's a bridal shower or it's a trip to Vegas. So there's something like, oh, I'm going to get tuned up because I'm guaranteed going to put 12, 15 pounds on while I'm there. Oh, yeah. And that way I'm just where I was before I started instead of being 10 pounds over where I am now. Oh, yeah. It's, I think you once said something black. about it's... And then you cardio yourself to death. Mm-hmm. Are you the one that said that? Mm-hmm. Where it's like you get either you do the, we'll use vacation. You're heading out to vacation and you're going to, you're planning your overindulgence. So you either make sure you have lost five to 10 pounds before you go. Or when you go back, it's overdrive. Sure. It's, I'm going to do 500 sit-ups a day, you know, 6,000 jump ropes. Cause now that I have put that weight on, I've got to get it off as fast as possible. But you planned yeah. to overindulge. Like, so let's recap real quick because okay. these, these, are, these are starting to blend now. So your first one was talking about, what was your first idea? So my first one was just talking about um, celebration of weight loss or like body fat loss with food. Using food as a reward. Yes. Okay. And then, um, w- then we came to me. So the, beha- the behavioral change for that was find a different reward. Exactly. Don't let food be your treat. Exactly. It's not that big fat mocha latte. It's not your cake. Okay. No. Then I came back with um, starting and stopping yes. either an eating program or an exercise program. And that's kind of blending into what you're saying where mm-hmm. people come back and then they overindulge to, uh, to correct the behaviors. Right. And it's, these are all so similar. That's why I wanted to review them real quick to yeah. say that they're different because they're all lifestyle behaviors that people, they associate with one. I don't see people do all these all the time. No, no, no. Definitely so not. The person here that starts and stops. They might be on point all the time, but Absolutely. when they are bad, they come back and they cardio blast themselves. Yes. You know, they extreme diet, extreme exercise, morning sessions, afternoon sessions, killing themselves. Yep. Um, okay. So that's, we're into three. Um, I had another idea, but it's kind of blending in with the other one where mm-hmm. it's hitting target goals and then letting it go. I've already beaten that one too. Um, it's kind of worth revisiting where there's those points, usually it's in the spring for us when we really start locking down because it's nice out, mm-hmm. um, that we see most of our clients looking phenomenal. Yes. And by fall, everything's falling apart again. Mm-hmm. So they, they had it. It was good while it lasted, mm-hmm. and they're willing to let it go again. Yep. When all it takes is just little check-ins every once in a while. Absolutely. And I think um, along that same lines, is it's what we constantly hear in the fall is – well, you know, there were just so many barbecues and picnics over the summer, and I really love beer. Yeah. No, it's like, well, a lot Who of people doesn't? love beer. Yeah, I do. And a lot of people love barbecues, but yeah. what is your, are, are you still in line with the goals that you set out 
or are you going to do the start and stop? You know, I, I can, and I can even hear there's, there's someone listening. that's like, man, why don't you live a little, you know, it's, it's okay. <laughs> and it is okay. You know, if, if you can maintain, if you're a dude and you're eight to 10% body fat year round, yep. go party it up. Yep. I mean, it, there is no rules for you because you, whatever you're doing works. Um, if you are struggling to stay below 30% body fat, mm-hmm. stu- struggling to stay anywhere near 20% body fat, mm-hmm. that's where the kind of the, the generalized rules for what works for a fit person versus an unfit person, they don't exist in right. the same pool anymore. And at that point, it's not judgment. I'm not doing this to judge and be like, well, I can do it and you don't have to. You know, right. I don't have to do it because you know, look at me. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm still plagued by decision obstacles all the time. Because I do love things that I know that if I overindulge, if I party with them, if I reward myself with them constantly, I will slip back. I mean, I'm designed to be a fat kid. <laughs> that's that's me. I'm I'm there. So, so I think we're we're still kind of driving in the same direction. Awareness is the big thing on how to kind of is that me? How do I spot check? Putting a little bit of extra uh, cardio or nutrition work or a little bit extra work in the kitchen during the summer Mm -hmm. can keep you from being stupid on Labor Day weekend. Oh, yeah. You know, when when Labor Day weekend comes around and people are wearing one pieces and the dudes are wearing, you know, swimsuit shirts, you know, (laughs) and and you can tell when it's like, oh, man, you know, a little check in every once in a while. Yeah. And if I can remember towards the end, we'll kind of revisit now um, just about using the scale to hold yourself accountable. Mm-hmm. If you don't want your spouse doing it, you're not going to a trainer and they're holding you accountable. Um, you should be getting feedback every day as to whether or not you're drifting on target or off target. Yes. All right. Who went last? I think it was me. So it's your turn. Um, the other one. And so this is something that we have a lot of stuff in the same. I think, I think mine and yours are overlapping a lot now. They are. Um, yeah. So another one of my thoughts, it's the same. It goes along with the same, but this is just specific to, food and I refer to it as binge dieting and what that means is you you really can't quite commit to one type of a diet Uh and we talked about this on another show it's you know what you shouldn't be doing is constantly dieting you should figure out a nutritional strategy that works for you correct but the binge diet is unfortunately ladies I hear this from you more than I hear it from um, our male clients but it's like my friend just started their vegan, and now I'm going to be a vegan. Yeah, okay. It, extreme dieting. Oh, almost. Yeah. yeah. But then in two weeks, I'm like, hey, how, how is it going? And it's like, well, my favorite thing in the entire <laughs> world is red meat. I don't I know love, what I was thinking giving up. I love meat. Exactly. So then they stop that. So then it's like, okay, that's fine. Now I'm going to go on a red meat only diet because I have deprived myself of it for the last two weeks. But then in three days, it's like, oh my gosh, what am I doing all, eating all this red meat? Mm. So now I'm going to fast for two days. And then what's that keto thing? Because I'm going to try that next. So it's, it's binge dieting. It's not being able to stick with anything because it's, they're extreme. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. People get bored. <laughs> yeah. People get bored. I mean. Um, oh, if people saw what we ate. <laughs> s- s- slow and steady <laughs> wins the race. Yes. And if you, if it's like speeding on, if you're speeding down the road, yeah. you know, you, <laughs> you're going 80 you get stuck behind a, a car, you're back down to 60. Mm-hmm. Then you get around, you're back up to 80. Then you're back down to 40. Then you're stuck in traffic. And then you're back up to 80. Then, <laughs> and, you're, then you're slowing down again. That's people's dieting. They and then never, you end up at the same red light. That's right. You never, you never got any further. <laughs> right. So after doing this crap for five years, uh, 10 years, you've been yep. starting and stopping, speeding and stopping all up and down the road. And mm-hmm. you are right where you were. Yes. Nothing remarkable. That sounds horrible. Yes, because it's binge. It's, or you're yeah. trying something you know me better than anybody. If you are like, this is what I'm going to try, and I have no interest in trying it, I don't do it. No doubt. Because I don't want to be... I can't get you to do anything. <laughs> I don't want to be one of those binge <laughs> dieters. That's another show. Um, I don't want to be a binge dieter. If I can't wrap my head around the fact that you know I'm never going to eat cheese again, which actually is fine. I could never eat cheese again. But if I can't wrap my head around it, I'm not going to commit to doing it because I know I'm going to fail. I lost you at cheese. I'm, I miss <laughs> cheese. Sorry. No, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, you're exactly so right. I would think with that one is if your best friend in the whole world is doing it, but it doesn't make sense to you, don't try it. I you th- know, I think we touched on this too. I'm, I'm, I've only got a finite amount of nutritional <laughs> know-how in my head. I guess it keeps coming out at the same time, <laughs> but, um, people align themselves with their meal plan, with their, 
the whatever they're following for their meal strategy. Yes. They associate with it. Yes. It's not like, yeah, I'm on a high fat, you know, I'm doing a high fat thing. I'm trying to get my blood work to do this. What they say is I'm keto. Exactly. And check it out, I'm keto. Uh-huh. And instead of saying, you know, I just avoid meat because I just don't feel right, whatever, it's I'm vegan. There's an identity, <laughs> you know, the identity that goes along with it. And when you do your binge dieting, yes. it's a split personality person because now <laughs> you associate with everything that everybody's doing. You know, was it Miley Cyrus that did the gluten free thing? Probably. Okay, so all of a sudden everyone. You know, I think it was her. <laughs> everyone's doing everything yes. and nothing works. Yes. It's the equivalent of stepping on the gas, going 100 down the road, and getting stuck at a red light. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's what binge dieting is as well. Exactly. So slow and steady. Pick something that makes sense. Yes. Pick something that's natural. Stop rewarding yourself with food. Yes. Stop BSing yourself. Yes. Okay. Um, I love it. I've, I've got, I, I don't like my couple of my other ones, so I'm going to go to the next one. This is my contentious one, and that's to stop blaming your kids and your spouse and your family members for why you can't make change. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's when you don't understand I've got kids, and my kids are special, and they need special food like Cheerios and milk and cheese, and you know, milk <laughs> make, does the body good. It doesn't do the body good. Okay, it's, it's, not the, it's not the most adorable type of calcium. There's other vitamin D fortified foods. Mm-hmm. So you keep crap in the house. So that you can eat it. I know. I know you're lying to me. I know. And the funniest thing is, is I your think, trainer knows. Well, first of all, you I know think why? Because we don't actually have small children. All of our children are our gym members because we're the mom. That's and right. Dad, we're the mom and dad of you all. I have four year old kids. Exactly. Um, I think that they think they can like trick us. Well, I am only buying those chips. Aho- oh, chips ahoy! I'm only buying those <laughs> chips ahoy because my kid wants them. You know they're your favorite cookie in the whole world, mm-hmm. and you're gonna eat some. Of course, I, but well, if it's only half cookie, it doesn't count. You know, so it doesn't <laughs> I matter. It and count. I wanted to make sure they weren't stale. And you know, <laughs> it, it's been a stressful day. And you know, there's a hundred reasons as to why I deserve these things. Yeah, we've had parents that have um, drawers full of candy. Yes, it's the candy drawer. I know. Oh, that's not for me. That's for my kids. I know. Do you put your hands in there? Of course you do. Yeah. Um, what was another one? Um, I got into it with a parent about goldfish. And how the processed food, we were trying to get the mindset of, look, processed food's worse for kids than it is for you. Right. Um, when the liver isn't able to detoxify as phase one, phase two, mm-hmm. I'm geeking out a little bit. When phase two, that's typically the one that doesn't detoxify all the way. And you end up where all the stuff the liver's trying to filter out, it ends up overflowing and coming back into the system because oh. phase one, phase two. And processed foods, not enough uh, greens, not enough, um, you know, color rich foods Mm -hmm. then phase two never happens and if phase two never happens you end up it's like a bad water filter in your fridge you end up drinking bad water because it's a bad filter um but to get a parent to use their weakness to justify their kids let's assume that they're being honest and they're enabling their kids to continue with this right and these are kids with behavioral problems Mm -hmm. problems in school Mm -hmm. problems with focus and attention and then shit i Great. Now we're explicit again. <laughs> I'm getting on my soapbox. You got you're Brian too. I'm completely off topic. Gen Zero. Dang it. Um, but this is something, I'm going to totally interrupt you. This is something that you're very passionate about because yeah. it's the number of people who say you don't have kids. It's almost like they don't understand that, first of all, we have been around kids our whole lives. We were kids ourselves. But it's like we aren't trying we're not saying you're a bad parent, which is the first thing people say. It's sure. like, well, you don't understand you're not a parent. It's like, okay, but... Not to mention it's none of your business. Right. Mm-hmm. But let's use goldfish. So it's like, I, you know, how dare you get involved in this? And it's like, but wait a minute. You've got to look at what we do for a living. And we're telling you what you're giving your kids. There's better options out there. Don't you want them to live a longer life? I mean... What, what they say is... It's funny because what they usually say is, I want my kid to live, and this is how they do it. Right. I want my kid to be a kid. Yeah. For, a kid for me was um, tomato soup and toast and cheese sandwiches. Right. You know, now it's boxes of crap and monsters and uh, mm-hmm. any toxic food they can yep. put in their body. And you end up not only, this is the first generation where the lifespan's been shortened. It, I can't even. The current generation has a lower life expectancy than we do. No, I can't even and go the, there. And the, we have clients with kids that struggle with weight. Yes. They don't just struggle physically. They struggle emotionally because they're going through crap at school. You know, they're, they're getting bullied. I got bullied. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, when I hit middle school, I grew out before I went up. <laughs> it sucked. Okay, so take it from, a, like I said, a former fat kid. You don't want to be there. There was no guidance for me then. Right. There was nothing mainstream. I couldn't jump on the internet and go see how I, you know, dropped those freaking 20 pounds that haunted me when I was a sixth grader. Of course not. Um, but... I'm way, way off topic. I know. But this is this is just something that you're very passionate about. And I think we should just say with this one, own it. And true. don't say something like, you know, my kids need this. You know, they need it. You don't understand. Just say, I am very much aware that this snack that I buy for them is processed garbage. Tr- and then own it. Try something radical. Stop being like everybody else. Boom. Don't don't follow the path that it gets into the whole vaccines and inoculations. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're not even going that extreme because mm-hmm. that's what you do. But when you talk about everybody else's kids do it, there's no harm in doing this. Oh, you yeah. know, my kid's straight A's, my kid's good in school, my kid's good in this. Their expectancy is lower. It is. And when they're out of whack after their teenage years, once the puberty stops and the the crazy hormones have slowed down, they will default to this behavior that you've built into them. Right. So, yeah, it's working for them now. Yep. Um, but for the majority of the population, kids are significantly struggling and suffering because of mom and dad's pretense mm-hmm. that that should be allowed for them. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to reel it back in. Thanks. You're welcome. So it's parents that want the food themselves or or husband or wife want the food themselves and they're using the other one as an excuse to bring it in. Correct. That, yep. th- this is a lifestyle behavior exactly. that's not only affecting the, the parent, the adult, mm-hmm. but you're now cementing these behaviors into your kids. Exactly. Great. Good. Talk that one to death. I know. It is, I, it's one of the, it is one of your most very passionate topics. Uh, I think because we don't have kids, people are like, what do you know? Exactly. I know. It's like, dude, are you kidding me? I'm bre- See, look, I got to bring you back again. I'm sorry. We're, okay. re- we're bringing you back in. It's your turn. Um, so one of mine that it was very shocking to me at first, and again, ladies, mm. sometimes y- y'all are killing me and I am one of you. It's what I'm going to call eating in the closet. Uh-oh. And so what this means is I have, I'm bringing this up because it's crazy the number of women that tell me they do this. It is, they go to the grocery store and they buy, I'm going to call it naughty. Let's say they buy a slice of cake at the deli (laughs) and they eat it in their car because they don't want freaking crazy. They don't want either their female roommate or their husband or their boyfriend or or whoever, their parents, if they're still at home to see them eat it because they're, what they're saying is that would be like me saying to you honey, I'm so unhappy with my body. And you're like, Hey, do you want to let's work together and help? Uh And I can't just, I don't know why I couldn't say to you, Oh man, you know what? If I don't get a snicker bar today, I'm, I'm going to completely go off path. Like I'm, I'm going to give up on myself. I'm going to do this. But instead I go, I buy the snicker bar. I eat it. I have to dispose of the wrapper (laughs) In something it's other than clan, my home trash can. It's a clandestine This is actually food a true operation. story. And then when you say to me, how did you do today? Then I lie. It's so, I don't understand, number one. <laughs> I'm right on plan, honey. Exactly. I'm so number good. one, well, first of all, I don't understand the lie, but that's a- another topic. But I don't get how is the belief that because nobody sees you doing it, so you're literally eating in your closet. God saw you do it. God saw you do it. <laughs> but <laughs> if, then it doesn't count. Like, is that the belief? So it's easier yes. that you eat in your car. It didn't happen. Like, if you think of how that mind, that whole thing would play out. So I tell you I'm going to run to the store. I get there. I'm in the checkout line. I buy my snicker. I go in the car. I have to look all around. I eat it as fast as I can, which, by the way, there's no way you're enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Then I take that wrapper and I drop, put that in the trash can at the grocery store. And you know what? You should throw your receipt there too. That's too much work. Like, it's just crazy to me. Now, you, you said you'd know somebody that's done this. So oh. we, we know someone. Don't We'll keep the details out. I um, would never reveal. But this, this is a person that was um, trying to avoid uh, the, the lowered brow of their significant other. Yes. When they would catch them indulging. I can promise you it's been more than one. Mm. Or it's closet like... It's closet eating because they don't want to have to confess to whoever, 
whoever is the person in their life that they wouldn't want knowing about it. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. You know, if I'm sitting there and I'm like, <laughs> I know if I bring, if I know if I bring something out of the cupboard and I know if it's bad <laughs> because I've led you astray a lot. I mean, I know that when I have a moment, you're like, hell yeah, he's having a weak moment. And then you'll jump on it too. Oh, heck yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I should just have more. And then it's, we get lathered up with food because it's, and it's nothing extreme. Man. I was going to say, we're, let's back up for a minute. Like, oh, it's oh bad. my gosh. It's bad. It's I like a had, handful of pretzels. I had four dates <laughs> okay. instead of my normal one. Well, I only went in there for one and now I ate four. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I so, am always on board with the encouragement of the other date. Here's the funny thing with hiding things. <laughs> when you hide, you are admitting that you're doing something you're not supposed to do. Yes. So let alone one, for, for, for some emotional, psychological reason, you are not comfortable doing bad things in front of your significant other, uh-huh. which is a different, like you said, it's a different topic. Of course it is. But when you hide, you know you're wrong. When yes. you don't tell people you do things, to go to somebody after you've done something and say, hey, I did this thing, you didn't come to me before you did it and ask for my guidance, support, yep. and advice. You did it, then yes. came and told me. So if you are sneaking food in the closet, yes. um, the worst part is the other person probably really wants to help you. Yes. Or they're just an obsessive a-hole and that it, shouldn't need to mind their own business, you know, because I'm not talking about fat shaming. I'm not talking about, no. um, not, let's say that if you came to me and you said, Brian, I need your help yes. for, for the next 30 days. Can we do this in the kitchen? I want to, I want to cook our meals every night. I want to make sure that I'm getting this type of food. I want to feel like this and I want to do my exercise this day. Yep. I will change everything about what I do. And I'd be like, I'm on the plan. You and I are doing this together. Of course. Where it sucks is if you're like, I'm doing the plan now, but you're in the closet snacking down Snickers bars. I'm like, dude, exactly. if you're not going to do this, then just be upfront with it. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's funny. And I'm just going to I'm going to add one little like personal thing to this. Um, I get asked a lot what I eat when you're not around, which I think is one of the funniest things <laughs> as if like kale, right? A lot of it. Exactly. So somebody will be like, when Brian's not home, what do you eat? I'm like, what I would eat if Brian was home. And then... <laughs> It, like, it's so funny to me. If, I, I like, love that I'm the controlling a-hole that, that limits what, what you put in your mouth. Yes. But like if when my older sister used to have cookie business, side note, and when she would bring cookies on the way home, I would always eat a couple. And I'm like, because I don't want to share them with Brian. That's not right. But it's not a sneaky <laughs> thing. It's uh, she made you my eat. favorite and I would eat two or three. So then I know how to share one with you. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Those are my favorite too. Great. <laughs> Yeah. So I would say with that one, um, the person in your life who is, you look at as your accountability partner or something, Mm -hmm. just be honest because the only person that you're hurting is yourself. And number one, you've got to hold on to a lie. Mm -hmm. So it's, but it's hanging out there. The the cosmic lie. Just tell your accountability person who may or may not be your significant other. I'm struggling with this. This is what I want. You know, maybe you guys, go out and get a cookie and you split it or you take half, you throw it in the trash can, you split the half together and you just kind of just set, kind of work through it together. Don't, don't hide it. There's a lot like, that goes on here. Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously we're not trying to be insensitive to eating disorders. We're not, not trying to be, oh gosh, no. this is, this is just silly behavior. We're not talking about anybody that needs some, not necessarily even professional help. They just need more care and nurturing than uh, the person that's just like, I just don't want them to see me doing it. No, exactly. Know? No, it's certainly not talking about anybody that needs mm. to go see, you know, a licensed professional because it's something much more deep than just. If you're borderline diabetes or you're diabetic right? and your significant other is changing a lifestyle in the house and then you go keep going, start doing stuff in the closet, that's no bueno. Okay. Exactly. Don't do that. Yeah. If you're with someone that makes you feel like crap because you want to enjoy something every once in a while, yes, they're an a-hole yes. and you need to address it. And I would start by eating in the kitchen instead of in the, in, in the hiding closet. in the car or something, yeah. you know? Um, but as a lifestyle dig, that's something that people just need to kind of yep. see yourself in the future. And is this a, a behavior you'd want your kids seeing? Exactly. Or your, you know, your And that's your honestly, person. that is with kind of everything. Like if you, if you wouldn't want somebody that you love to follow what you're doing or, you know, we'll use a parent or something. And it's like, would you want your, to hear your parents say, you know, I, I got off medication and that's my win. So then I'm going to reward myself with food and then, right. you know, and then I'm going to celebrate by a vacation where I overindulge and then you wouldn't mm-hmm. like you wouldn't. So want the you same for me? yourself, just the, people this, in them. general. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So just if you wouldn't want somebody else to, to do it or feel like they had to hide something or overindulge or whatever, don't do it yourself. 
Like, no. love yourself enough. If you don't want somebody else to do it, don't do it yourself. That's perfect. Um, we're going to try to, like, close this out. Yeah. Just so that it's more digestible instead of a, a winded hour. So the last topic I had was just failure to plan. That's usually a lifestyle mm -hmm. hang-up for people is that they walk into things blind. Like, the, like, there's no lights on in the room. There's no windows. You have no idea what you're doing. You're hungry, and you show up to an event, and then you just go st silly, you right. know? lifestyle it's an inconvenience to be prepared for everything yeah. it's an inconvenience to plan it's an inconvenience to look at it like it's a, like it's a military operation you got to have contingency plans you got to have your regular mm -hmm. battle plan you've got your contingency plans you've right. got you've got all this thing that kind of encompasses what am i going to encounter and how do i respond when it happens mm -hmm. this thing so lifestyle issue is people fail to plan and they end up in situations where they're hungry they have no food they haven't done any planning there's nothing in the house to eat right. and then they go off the rails yep um, now do you have any last minute tips? So we'll, we'll just wrap this out with some, any kind of, we covered a lot and we had dozens of people in mind, um, that we've encountered yeah. recently, long time ago, family mm -hmm. members, that's where all that was drawn from. And it's, if, if I could give somebody willpower, yeah, it'd be the greatest thing to give away. I know. I agree with you. And willpower didn't start out. Willpower is something that accumulates over time. Mm hmm when you have more to lose and there's more sacrifice and there's more things put into an event, you're less likely to give it up because it's earned. Yeah. It's something earned. When you binge and crash diet and it's five pounds, 10 pounds, you didn't really earn it. Right. Earning it is a lifestyle. When you earn weight loss, you've conformed your behaviors. Mm -hmm. When you crash diet, it's like you stole it. Okay, you, you stole the weight loss That's because it's not, it's not really yours because you did extreme silly things to get it. Yeah. And when you come back, you're like, well, of course it's coming back because I didn't earn this 10 pounds. So that's a neat way of looking at it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, that's a cool perspective. So from a place of caring, take a real hard, fast look at what your hangups are. Yep. Um, I'd you, say write them down. <laughs> top five things yeah. that you know that you hide mm -hmm. are ashamed of personally, not right. what other people think, but what you think of yourself. Um, that 10 pounds you keep losing, do you, have you ever earned it? Right. Or did you just cheat your way, laxative your way to drop in that weight? Right. Okay. Um, yep. what, what other tips do you have? Yeah. So I would just say, write them down. And the, the next thing I would do is find somebody to just be your accountability partner who you can be honest with. And I don't think it always is a spouse. Like sometimes it's, if it's a girlfriend, you need to find that girlfriend who is going to be on, who's going to be on you. That's going to be like, not enable. you know what? You said we're going to do this. So you want to go to lunch? Let's not go where it has your favorite um, tacos. I don't sure. know. Not that uh, tacos can be, I guess, kind of healthy depending on where you go. But but find that one person who you can just be honest. And if you're going to slip, talk to them about it first so they can kind of talk through, do you really want this? Or is your is your new lifestyle what you want more? Bring it into the light. Bring it into the light. Carol Ann. <laughs> That's a poltergeist reference. So. I knew that. Okay. Um, okay. So look beyond your limited scope and scale of life. Yep. You have to, um, don't just think about your short term goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. Once you've pushed that stone up the hill, keep it there and start pushing forward slowly, small little bits, steps yes. at a time. Um, the goal is to never go back. Your right. willpower will build the more you can hold on to those goals. Yes. So, Accomplishments over time mm -hmm. creates willpower and resolve. Boom. Yeah, okay. Drop mic. That's it. Literally. I literally <laughs> drop my mic. Um, I think that hopefully, hopefully this is beneficial. Um, th there's I hope a, so. There's a lot that I just want to go up and baby shake people. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like if, if we can just kind of curtail a little bit of the bull jive you tell yourself, mm -hmm. I can, we can, you can go for as far as you wanted to. Yes. Never look at weight again. Oh, you'd never look back. Like you would never look back to where you came from if you stopped BSing yourself. We, yeah. we, we talked, uh, we, we talk about this in the gym and we've been talking about it in circles and I can't remember where I heard it the first time. So I apologize to the person whose idea I'm ripping off right now. Um, there was a point where it was all of your time was the greatest asset, right. your time. What's the greatest thing you have? Oh, mm -hmm. it's your time. And now the new school of thought is it's your focus. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I could remember where I heard this from. Um, where you spend, what has your focus, has your time. Mm -hmm. So just simply saying time isn't good enough anymore. Now, from a weight loss, overweight, struggle with weight perspective, the amount of focus that goes into changing your clothes, 
tugging on your clothes, looking in the mirror, unhappy with how you look, thinking about your diet, the diet, mm -hmm. the diet. You're doing that all day. Mm -hmm. Then I got to go to the gym because of how I look, because of the way my clothes fit. All that focus is stealing your time. So when you are able to get to the oh, point wow. where you're like, I love where I am physically. And don't lie to yourself. Are you tugging on the clothes? Do you keep looking in the mirror? Yeah. You keep looking at the scale. When you get that time back, that focus, you put that on the rest of your life, mm -hmm. not on your weight. So what you're paying yourself really, truly is focus and time. Because when you get to that point where you've accomplished the thing, where you're like, I can rock a tank top, I can rock shorts, mm -hmm. I love where I'm at, your time and attention goes to everything else. Not, yes. not the superficial stuff that 70% of the population is struggling with. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, that's driving. Yeah. It's like driving every thought that you have somehow goes back to that. That's right. But once you're, once you're kind of good to go, you start focusing on other things and the body just like everything just kind of stays in check. We, I've got a friend. I wish I could, I won't say his name, uh -huh. but uh, it was one of my first clients, uh -huh. the very first client that we trained and he's still going strong. Yes. And the amount of focus and time that went into his body composition and focus, yes. it robbed him of his personality. Yeah. And now he's thriving. He's been doing it for over a decade. Exactly. So, oh, it's so cool. I wish that for all of you. Yes. Get, get that time back. Exactly. Okay. Um, 45 minutes. I'm about five minutes longer than I wanted to. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah. Thank yeah. you all so much. Um, hope, I hope at least one thing resonated with you or at least one, maybe, maybe two or three. Easily one. And the, the, the key is going to be that you hung up on this a long time ago. When, exactly. you, when you heard something that ticked you off and, and you're like, they're talking about me. F them guys. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> all right. Rocking. Okay. Exactly. We wish you all a very long and healthy life because we know it's what you secretly Absolutely. want. You deserve it. You do deserve it. And um, don't let the refrigerator and cupboard boogeyman's ruin your future exactly. or your kid's future. Amen. Stop lying to yourself. <laughs> be good <laughs> all right clean up after yourself uh, now you've anything else no now you're going crazy okay all right guys peace bye bye, -bye. <laughs> thanks for listening to the beyond the dumbbell show we know you have thousands of options for content and entertainment we appreciate you spending time with us if you enjoyed our show please share our web address www.beyondthedumbbells.com and maybe drop us a review until next time Live beyond.